Good morning, everyone. Yes, I feel a lot better than last night. <laughs> I slept great on a wonderful mattress I've never slept on. It's one of those memory foam mattresses or something. <laughs> what they all come up with these days, right? Yes. Oh, I hear there's much more fancier stuff out there. I'm good. I'm good. I've always been good just having a mattress whatever right yes yeah yeah uh but yes another big day it's my youngest granddaughter's no she's not my youngest granddaughter's my younger granddaughter's uh last soccer game today which i will get to go and see and i've seen some videos of her playing boy she's a trooper I guess having an older brother and, you know, kind of, they like to, you know, okay, not quite fist fight, but they really like to play and romp around with each other. And it's always been that way. My grandson is very physical, <laughs> always been. And uh, she had to keep up with that. Yes, yeah. So she's tough. She's a tough little one. And uh, you can tell when she's on that field, man, she's going for the ball. She's really watching and running. And yes, yeah, so I'm excited to go and see it live. Yes. And she's excited for me to be there and see her. Yep, yep, yep. Then the rest of the weekend, rest up. Yes. And, uh, and then ah, it all starts over again with the crew. The first thing my granddaughter said last night was when she came home, Grizzy, tomorrow, are we going to go and reconnoiter? And I said, yeah, I guess we could. I was like, wait a minute, you've got a game going, then you guys are going to the Strawberry Festival. And, uh, and she's like, oh, yeah. So I said, I guess we'll have to wait until Monday when everybody is together. I'm so excited. I really am. And got another garden to yeah start we're gonna wait till monday to do it with all the children together that'll be the first thing we'll do together yes put in the garden so excited uh oh and i uh-huh yes i got something i knew it wasn't the poison ivy because i right after I was done, I uh, I went and I washed up with soap. Yes, of course I do that anyway. I, I mean, you never know, I'm not gonna go and take a chance, right? Even though, and nothing for two days. Then I went, uh, I cleaned out the compost area that they have, and there was a whole bunch of pokeweed. And pokeweed, I, I've pulled plenty of pokeweed, never, you know, didn't matter and they never had a reaction to that either but this time I cut it with they were so big I cut them with clippers and uh, must have come in contact with the juice on the inside and uh, and it was this arm that I used to you know clip and then because I'm left-handed I used this arm to just pull it out and I was, they were so big I have no doubt the stuff got on my arms uh, or this arm, and I, one thing I didn't do, I never, never even thought of it, uh, was I did not go in afterwards, I kept on working, sweating, and uh, didn't wash off right away with soap, and that, yes, and then a day later, I'm going, huh, then two days later, I'm going, what the heck is going on, it can't be, this is not a delayed reaction from the poison ivy, I know that. And besides, I said, that was way worse in poison ivy, even last year, and then there was nothing happening. So I thought, well, what did I do different? And I thought, oh, that's what I did different. And I just went and looked it up, and sure enough. So I found something I'm allergic to when it comes to plants, besides the white sumac, which I know. <laughs> and... Uh, but again, it's not really itching or anything. I used the uh, comfrey tincture that I have to dry it out and pull the, the poison out. And, uh, and then I put a little baby lotion on it and it takes the itch right away. And, and I'm good. Now it's just a matter of, yeah, yeah, it's probably gonna take a week for it to really all heal up. But 
learned my lesson. Oh, okay. So two plants now. Okay. Most of them, as I said, have no. Uh, but the white sumac, right, which I showed really little, very, uh, and a uh, very little uh, reaction to it. Uh, though other people have, it just looks awful, the rashes that they get, absolutely awful. And it's the same with the poke juice. Uh, if that gets on people, they literally even tell you to call the poison control center. And it's like, oh my gosh, really? Okay, well, then I guess I'm, again, I'm having a very mild reaction considering what other people go through, right? Yes. Well, anyway, so here we are. I better get this going. I have to get ready soon to go and uh, have a bunch of fun with little ones, watching them just enjoy. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so let's get going here. We're in the book of Nehemiah 7. Something's going on up there. Oh, and my granddaughter and I found one, two, three, four, five, six nests right here in this little... And I saw a bird coming with a bunch of stuff in its mouth, and I was sitting right here, and the bird like looking at me going, huh. Ah. And then it flew really close, you know, right? <laughs> I'm going, oh, you're trying to get rid of me so you can keep building that nest? Yeah. Just keep going. I won't hurt you. So I have a feeling we'll, we'll be hearing a lot of chirp chirps here in a little bit. Okay. Very cute, isn't it? Very cute. Here's my Christmas cup again. Mmm. Yum, yum. Okay. Let's see what else ne Nehemiah has in store for us here. The wall is finished, seven. Now, when the wall had been rebuilt and I had hung the doors, the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites were then appointed again. I entrusted the administration of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani and to Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, for he was more trustworthy, God-fearing man than many others. I said to them, the gates of Jerusalem must not be opened until the sun gets hot, and the doors must be shut and bared before it begins to go down. Very good. De detail guards. Oh, that's a long one. From the residents of Jerusalem, each to his post in front of his own house. Uh... What's he doing? He's not keeping the reins in his own hands, is he? He's doing what? He's looking for trustworthy people to hand over responsibilities. That's what you do when you live together. That's what you do when you create a good society. So I have to say, right, the more I read about Nehemiah, I have to say, wow, did I just find... Okay, am I going to get disappointed later on? Did I just find someone that I really resonate with when it comes to on how I believe that people should work together in society and also according to God's ideal on what mankind's supposed to be and do here on earth? Yes. And that's very encouraging. Yes. Does one have to go through what? How many books this not have just dear me, you know? We have sayings, you know, dumber than coal buckets. Huh? Not the smartest tools in the shed, obviously. Right? Do I have to go through all that useless stuff when it comes to actual, okay, restoration? Working together truly with God and be under God's guidance, our heavenly parents' guidance. Right? To then, when you come actually across, what, one person? One person out of hundreds of thousands that in a leadership position is doing the right thing, the absolute right thing. That's, I guess then it really sticks out. Whereas most of the times that they just kind of get lost in the cracks somewhere. Well, you've got so many people around you, and what is he fighting through as well? You know, when it comes to people terrorizing him with, harassing him with letters of just, why are you slandering me like this? I never, 
never did any of that, never said any of that. <laughs> yeah. So many I don't like. No, we don't want to change. We like the way we live right now, right? Yes, yeah, until something happens again, then suddenly it's <laughs> new covenant with God, right? Yeah. So, very nice so far to read this, right? Kind of kind of excited right? to meet people in the Old Testament, I have to say. All right, so it was possible. It wasn't just didn't know, didn't know how, right? no idea, new path, there were people, there were people who did know, did try, and under the guidance of God. Yeah. Yes? Okay, all right, then. Yeah. Cool. The repopulation of Jerusalem. The city was large and spacious, but the population was small and the houses had not been rebuilt. My God then inspired me to assemble the nobles. Aha, you see, God inspired him. He's working with God. That tells me that he is working with God. And I know I'm saying all this, and then something will come up, and we're going to, what has happened? Where did you go? <laughs> well, let's find out. Ah, right now, give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Right now, it's looking good. <laughs> the officials and the people for the purpose of taking a census by, the, by families. I discovered that genial genealogical re register of those who had returned in the first group and there I found entered list of the first exiles to return yes we read about that we're going to read all this we're going to do all this again I, okay these are the people of the province who returned from the captivity of the exile those whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had deported and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah each to his own town they were the ones who arrived with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Misperet, Bigvai, Nehum, Ba'ana. Hmm, I'm getting better at reading all this. Probably some wrong, some right. Hey, do, your, do what you can with a foreign language. Oh, which reminds me of something. <laughs> I said that the last time, too, in one of them. <laughs> Same thing. <coughs> <coughs> the number of the men of the people of Israel, sons of Parash, 2,172. Sons of Shepatiah, 372. Sons of Ara, 652. Sons of Bahat Moab, that is to say, sons of Yeshua and Yoab, 2,818. I should go and see if this is... Uh, if this is right along with the kind of census that we got in Ezra. Ooh, interesting. I might do that later. This would take too long here. Okay, all right. Then you know, just keep going. You got to go someplace. But I'm interested now. I want to see. I want to go and see what. <coughs> 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 Surely there will have been some discrepancies, but okay. Sons of Elam, 1,254. They're so precise here, aren't they? As I said, that, that flip-flopping between leaving things out, like names that, you know, okay, there was one, you know, and, and then the preciseness in, in other things, and it's a bit of a giveaway when they're actually telling the truth and when not, or when things may have been just assumed and a little bit, yeah, just saying. And when not, sons of Satu, 860, sons of Binui, 648, sons of Bebai, 628, sons of Asgad, 2,322, sons of Adonikam, 667, sons of Bigvai, 2,067. Okay, I think I know what I missed here. This sounds like the census of everyone. And I think in Ezra, it was just the census of the priests and the Levites that had returned. I'm not sure, because the numbers here are much higher. And then these were the list of the first exiles to return. Sons of Adin, 655. Sons of Alter, that is to say of Hezekiah, 98. Okay. Sons of Hashum, 328. Sons of Bezai, 
324, sons of Harit, 112, sons of Gibeon, 95, men of Bethlehem and Netapah, 188, men of Anatot, 128, men of Beth Asmavet, 42. Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. Men of Kiriat Yerim, Shepira, and Berat, 743. Sounds like it, it was the same uh, census or the same list. Men of Ramah and Gebar, 621. Men of Michmas, 122. Men of Bethel and Ai, 123. Men of the other Nebo, 52. Sons of the other Elam, 1,254. Sons of Harim, 320. Sons of Jericho, 345. Sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, mm -hmm. 721. Sons of Sena, 3,930. The priests, oh, here we go. Sons of Jediah, of the house of Yeshua, 973. Sons of Immer, 1,052. Sons of Pashur, 1,247. Sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, sons of Yeshua, of Kadmiel, of the sons of Hodiah, 74. The singers, sons of Asaph, we heard all that, 148. The gatekeepers, sons of Shalom, sons of Atter, sons of Talmon, sons of Akbub, sons of Hatita, sons of Shobai, 138. It would have been nice if they would have actually broken this down into the 12 tribes. <laughs> as well, not just uh, singled out the Levites, it's just one tribe letting us know, but it, it, it is what it is. Okay, if I need to read all this and, 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 and being given all this information for one, I, I want it all, I want it to be more interesting and to see who from whose tribes are still around this and that, would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Well, to me it would be but it's not in here. So it's kind of boring to read. Okay, all right. So sorry. Okay, all right. It's all right. And we got what we got. The temple slave sons of... Man, I'll tell you what. Anytime slaves come up, I'm getting a bit upset. The temple slave sons of Siha, sons of Hasufa, sons of... Tabaot, sons of Kera, sons of Sia, sons of Padan, sons of Lebanon, sons of Hagabah, sons of Shalmai, and that's again, the temple slaves. It's almost as if if you give, if you give, if God has slaves in the temple, then it's okay for everyone else to have them, right? Yes? You see, this is just not right. Just, just saying that now, okay, but... Just saying, right? And people, not talking about Nehemiah. As I said, it's just written down as it was. <sighs> sons of Gazam, sons of Utsa, sons of Pasea, sons of Bezai, sons of of the Menuit Meunites. Who are those people? Sons of the Nephusites, sons of Bakbuk. Sons of Hakufa, Hakupa, sons of Harhur, sons of Batslit, sons of Mehida, sons of Harsha, sons of Barkos, sons of Sisera, sons of Tema. At least they're being named there, not all, all completely forgotten just because they're slaves. Yeah, better than nothing. Right. Sons of Nesaiah, sons of Hatipa, the sons of Solomon's slaves. Great, more of them. Sons of Sotai, which means whose slaves are they now? Sons of Setai, sons of Soferet, sons of Perida, sons of Yala, sons of Darkon, sons of Gidel, sons of Shepatiah, sons of Hatil, sons of Pokaret Hazebaim, sons of Ammon, but that's a long name, sons of Pokaret, Pokaret Hazebaim. It's an awfully long name for a slave. I wonder about that one. Sons of Mammon, I wonder about all of them for that matter. The total of the temple slaves and the sons of Solomon slaves, 392. 
The following who came from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer could not prove that their families and ancestry were of Israelite origin. The sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons... Oh, Tobiah, that's why... Aha! Uh -huh. I see what's going on here. The sons of Nakoda, 642. And among the priests, the sons of Hobiah, the son, sons of Haksas, the sons of Barzillai, who had married one of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, whose name he adopted. These had looked for their entries in the official genealogies, but were not to be found there, and were hence disqualified from the priesthood. Consequently, His Excellency forbade them to eat any of the consecrated food until a priest appeared who could consult Urim and Thummim. The whole assembly numbered 42,360 people, not counting their slaves and maidservants to the number of 7,337. They also had 245 male and female singers. They had 435 camels and 6,720 6, donkeys. Interesting. The certain people weren't counted, right, because of whatever, but they're counting the animals. No. Mm -mm. One does not do that. Human being less worth to be counted than camels and donkeys? Come on now. Yeah, see, I know the stuff like that. Oh, why? So it doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. It's all about attitude and behavior. And if that's not clear on what that is, among the people, you come up with stuff like this, eh? where possessions become more important than a human life. Just saying. A certain number of heads of families contributed to the work. His Excellency contributed 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 bowls, and 30 priestly robes to the fund. We know that. That's that. That was the king of whatever. Okay. And heads of families gave 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minas to the work fund. No, that they were, that's, no wonder they were complaining. The gifts made by the rest of the people gifts. <laughs> that's not what it sounded like before here when we read, uh, what was it, unhappy social problems of Nehemiah. That's not what it sounded like then. Right now they put it in a little different again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it said there were some other things put in here. All right, just saying. <laughs> to what? Yeah, okay. Mm. Ah, the gifts made by the rest of the people amounted to 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly robes. The priests, the Levites, and some of the people lived in Jerusalem and thereabouts. The singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple slaves in their appropriate towns, and all the other Israelites in their own towns. Okay. There's a little tiny bit more before eight, but I have an overhead. Judaism is born. Ezra reads the law, the feast of shelters. So why are we going from the really interesting story of Nehemiah back into Ezra's stuff? Hmm. Makes you always makes me always wonder on how they put the stuff together. Well, we'll give them some of the truth here, and then we're going to put in again what we want, because we got to get things, keep things going in a certain direction, and not, not, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, all right. I heard a bird this morning uh, while I was sitting here drinking coffee and checking my my messages and stuff and 
and there was a bird. I've never heard this bird before, and it the way it sounded, it went as gritty, 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 as gritty, 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 which as gritty, gritty means a hello, right? A hello in Swiss. A hello, a hi, a hi, a hi, a hi, a hi, a hi. It's gritty, gritty, gritty. And I thought, oh, it could also, you know, just depending on, I guess, who you are, what language you speak, could also sound like, gritty, 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 which is thank you and could be thank you in Italian. But it sounded like gritty. Gritty, gritty, gritty. Never heard that bird before. I'm going, ha, ha. First morning at my da other daughter's home, and I have a bird singing to me in Swiss. Hello. <laughs> I don't know. Do other people notice things like that around them? When you're working together with God, under the guidance of God, you have, there's all kinds of really interesting stuff that just happens to you. Now, or that you're kind of being given a little present. What did I say? And possessions that you have become more important than the people around you. And your attitude and behavior is dictated by your possessions. You're not probably not going to experience the greater wonders of life. Yes, most likely. I don't know. I don't live that way. Anywho. Ah. That is it for this morning. I have got to get going. Got to, got to, got to, got to. Oh, and uh, 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 the neighbor that I met yesterday, we were out on the road when we got here and she was walking the dog. She says, I'm sorry, I will make sure she likes to bark. She, the very young dog. I don't think it's about a year old now or something. She likes, she barks at the kids sometimes, you know, and I'm really trying not to say, hey, stop right there. Barking is a dog's language, and it doesn't seem like your dog's a mean dog or anything, you know, probably just barking to say hello, or hey, I'm here too. It's a young dog still, a year old dog still considered a puppy in my eyes, you know, juvenile <laughs> or something. Teenager. And, uh, and, you know, exuberant and all that life still and energy going on right and uh, sure enough last night she said oh thank you your dog's not going to uh, i'm going to feel right at home with your dog barking i said i'm not she said she doesn't do it excessively as i said i'll feel right at home it's not going to bother me and don't please don't discipline her for something that's natural in a dog to do done and if you want a dog also to kind of protect your home a little bit don't discourage them from doing that right anyway then last night uh, my do granddaughter and i were out here and she was running up and down the fence and the dog was out too and the dog was running with her ruff, 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 ruff. and eventually the dog start, stopped barking she went and i said you can give the dog the hand and he'll sniff and no no no, no okay and uh, so a few times up and down here the fence you know they were running together and he's barking and then and then you know, she goes, okay, hi, no, 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 no. And then she did it again, and the dog just kind of ran with her after that, right? It was done. Oh, hi, yeah. oh, great, let's play, you know? So she was barking for a little while, and then that was it. You know? Yes, see? And it's nice that she didn't call him back and say, oh, don't bark, come here. Then, right? Because she knew, okay, we weren't neighbors like that who were going to have a hissy fit over a dog barking. That's their language, by the way. Okay? And anybody has a problem with that, man, you have to, aha, attitude and behavior. And, yeah, I get it. Yeah? In your environment, what, you don't want a barking dog around? Well, if you're living somewhere where you have neighbors, that's also their environment, and they have a barking dog, well, then you need to move. Uh, best thing probably would be somewhere where there's nobody living around you. Uh, just say, right? yes, you want your space to be as you want it, but then other people around you can't have that. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> so, absolutely, am I okay with that dog barking? I say he's not out at night incessantly barking or anything like that. It's nothing like that. And the little barking that dog's doing, I'm perfectly fine with it. Right? Well, I understand the necessity right, of the dog why it barks. And that's that language. They talk to you like that. <laughs> talk back to them. As soon as they realize you acknowledge them while they're barking at you, okay, again, this is a friendly dog. This dog was introduced to me by the owner. I'm not going to go, go up to a dog that's snarling and barking. I mean, I'm gonna, all right, well, I guess you weren't taught properly or something. It's not like you're an, an enemy, right? Well, there is that. So, but not this one. But it was kind of cute last night, the give and take. Yeah, I'm going on and on and on about it. I don't understand people who are just so unreasonable about things. Right? Yes, don't get it. I just don't. So. They want me to give you time. Be reasonable. All right, I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so, another great day. Hoo, 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 hoo. Yes. And with that, may Heavenly Parent bless and protect you, embrace you with love, and I will talk to you tomorrow.